Hello friends. Welcome to Thinker Views podcasts where we share our book reviews with you. The world of fantastic fiction is an unending source of stories that highlight the expanse of human imagination, which creates worlds that are richer and deeper than our own times and filled with magic and adventures. There are the widely known classics like The Lord of the Rings, but there are also a lot of other similar works that weave the threads of mythologies around the walls with a rich landscape filled with humans and other races as they face and resolve the conflicts of their times. Indian mythological tales have the concept of yugas that there are four consecutive ages namely Satya yug, Treta yug, Dwapar yug and Kali yug. At end of Kali yug the world as we know it ends and the cycle begins again. We also have the concepts of reincarnation and rebirth to carry out our incomplete tasks and pay our debts from previous lives. Author Robert Jordan's widely popular fantasy series The Wheel of Time will remind you of all these concepts once you start reading journey with this books. Published in 1990, The Eye of the World is the first book in this series and has been loved by readers all around the world. It has been followed by number of books and this year we hope to complete reading this fantastic series and explore the adventurous world within. So let us start with reviewing the first book of the series for you on behalf of Team Thinker View. Now since the series has been in publication for more than 30 years, its cover pages in the gateway to the fictional story explored within has been revamped and repackaged for the readers again and again. There was a time when the cover pages featured adventurous heroes that looked more like Indiana Jones or the characters from Star Wars. While one of the latest iterations actually is more in line with the digital world we live today and is visually more appealing as it draws on the timeless concept of the serpent eating its own tail while the older books and covers had vintage look and were attractive in the sense of time when they were published the latest version looks really classy its finishing is attractive and the use of not so bright colors makes it even more elegant let's look at the storyline then once upon a time there was a man called lus therin telamon he accomplished great things but he paid very high price for the great things in the end and the consequences were so great as to breaking the world apart it has been thousands of years since the days of the dragon and life in peaceful town of the two rivers has a very comforting pattern men and women of this hamlet are preparing for the spring festival of beltine although it has been a long winter and spring is late in arriving The town is in for a surprise this year though as not only the regular peddler and the glee men arrive in time for the festival there are also other visitors a lady named Moiraine and her companion Len as young people of the village especially Rand, Metrim or Met, Perrin and Igwein are looking forward to the festival The night brings horrors instead of joy. The town and farms around it are attacked by monstrous creatures called Trollocs, driven by dark creatures. To his great surprise, Ren finds that his father has a heron mark sword and can fight. When Ren brings him to the village for treatment of his wounds, he finds burnt houses and frantic people. 
He also discovers that Lady Moraine is an Aes Sedai, a woman who can touch the source and wield magical powers, and Len is her warder. Moraine convinces Rand, Matt, and Perrin that there is a pattern to the attacks and they must leave the village if they want to protect their families. Egwene joins the party just as they are about to leave and so the journey starts. The way is full of enemies and variety of risks and perils. A few days later, they are joined by Nynaeve, the wisdom of the two rivers, the head of village women who has come looking for the youngsters. The Trolloc armies drive the fleeing party to a dark and dangerous place called Shadar Lagos. And while trying to escape the shadow, they are all separated. Rend, Met, and Tom the Gleeman in one group, Moiraine, Len, and Nynaeve in other, and Perrin and Egwene in the third. All three groups head towards the city of Kemlin, where they hope to catch up with others. Rent and Matt's journey is beset with dark friends around every corner and Tom loses his life trying to protect them. Tired, starved and cold, they somehow survive every attempt to kill them, but the darkness is creeping into their dreams and their minds. Perrin and Igwain's journey takes them to the Tinkers, where they learn the way of the leaf and then on to the persecuting, torturous children of the light until they escape with the help of wolves. While Kemlin does allow them all to meet up once again, the city is hardly the end of their troubles. If anything, it appears that all forces around them are colluding to force the young friends into the hands of the Dark One. The Dark One may be still imprisoned, but his bonds are weakening, and all stories indicate that he is about to destroy the place called the Eye of the World, and then will proceed on to breaking the world. Why are Rens, Met, and Perrin such a focus of the Dark Forces? What is Moiraine's purpose in scouting for them? Camelin is hundreds of miles away from the eye of the world which is at the brink of destruction. Is there even time enough for the forces fighting against the Dark One to reach there, to counteract against whatever he is planning to do? Is this the last battle? Or is it start of a war all over again? And let's share our reviews and reviews with you now. Some authors write straightforward, simple stories that click with the readers who may be short of time. While some authors go on to create worlds so rich with history and culture that thousands of pages telling its tales are not enough. And over time, fans become experts in this culture speak its languages, reenact its characters and battles through conventions dedicated to such worlds. This is one of such series. Firstly, there are nearly a dozen books, so you can imagine the scope of the stories. Secondly, you nearly are at the end of this first book when you have a clearer understanding of what happens in the prologue. Because now you have had time to familiarize yourself with this world and its characters, their history, their perceptions and prejudices, you understand the beginning of this tale. More importantly, you see the cyclic nature of the Wheel of Time, the serpent eating its own tail, the symbol of eternity, the perpetual war between light and dark and the amazing web the author weaves to give us this powerful story. 
The wheel of time weaves the pattern of the ages, and lives are the threads it weaves. No one can tell how the thread of his own life will be woven into the pattern or how the thread of a people will be woven. At the heart of such story there is always a hero who is born to play a role written by destiny for him with not much choice around it. Here we have five such young people Rand might be the dragon reborn, but he certainly is not the only one with a difficult journey. Neither of them have any concept or training in fighting, but when time comes, they all have no choice but to fight. Anything can be a weapon if the man or woman who holds it has the nerve and will make it so. In stories, the heroes find the treasure and defeat the villain and live happily ever after. But sometimes, heroes die. Are you a hero? This book was first published in 1990 and keeping that in mind, when you read how the female characters of the book are created, it is quite a delightful experience. Women of these times are strong, they have their say in running of households, villages, and nations. They are strong-willed in the age-old differences in the way men and women view the world are highlighted here without any preaching notes of feminism. A lot of fictional fantasies that came before these stories had only beautiful princesses. For example, in Lord of the Rings, the only female warrior gets a chance to fight because she wouldn't take a no, but she still has to sneak to a battle. While here, Nynaeve and Egwene make their own choices. Young they might be, but they do take their shots at creating their lives. Even if it means giving up the life they have always thought they will have in their peaceful village, and a possibility to become much feared and hated Aes Sedai and living in their world full of political turmoil. Being the story of epic struggle between light and dark, the narrative is filled with lots of gems of observation. Let me share a few of them with you. The mind plays tricks in the night. The eye sees what is not there. Hope is like a piece of string when you're drowning. It just isn't enough to get you out by yourself. The price of help is always smaller than you can believe, always greater than you can imagine. In the most longed for dream of humanity along with freedom, peace, when you have never known a thing except to dream, it becomes more than a talisman. Although fans have loved this series for generations, the latest revival has been in form of an audiobook read by Rosamund Pike, who also features as Moiraine in season 1 of the Wheel of Time series on Amazon Prime. So there are a variety of platforms to pick your own way of enjoying this fantastical world and explore a world that is filled with a lot of likeable characters and exciting adventures. In summary, it is an epic tale of eternal struggle between light and darkness and beginning of journey for heroes who must become heroes and save the world. Thinker Views rating for the series is at around 8 and we are enjoying exploring this books. Please let us know if you are a fan of Robert Jordan's writing and enjoy this fantastical tales via comments in the sections below. 
please do let us know if there are any other fantasy adventures that you love and would like us to read and share with you here. And until next time, thank you for listening.